Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy John Lomax III. This Towns Van Zant songbook has become very rare and collectible over the years, and he's going to tell you the story of its origin. The songbook came out because my brother, Joe, had a publishing company called Wings Press, and it was mostly, it was what you call a small press, and he did a lot of poetry. I was managing Towns at the time. This was 76 or 7, and I said, look, Towns is a poet, you know, and why don't we do a book, and it would be Towns' lyrics over here and then the music over here. And they could see, you know, if they wanted to play, there would be the sheet music. And if they just wanted to sing along from memory, there's the lyrics. And so uh, Towns thought it was a pretty cool idea. My idea of it was to show the world that he was more than just a songwriter and singer, that he also had his music, his lyrics could stand alone. That was really the idea that I was trying to present. And so Towns and I sat down and went through songs, and he pretty much picked them all. I think I may have had a couple that I wanted in there that he wasn't that wild about, but we put it in there anyway. So, And then he had a little comment about each song, you know, sometimes just a sentence or two, sometimes three or four. And then we... I wrote a little introduction. I got Lola Scobie to write an essay about Towns, and then we had a discography, and we had uh, two pages of critical comments from various people about him and original pictures. Also, I wanted to have a songbook that wasn't the same old Mel Bay thing with two promo shots and then a bunch of songs. I wanted something that really presented the artist. And so we used photographs from half a dozen different photographers that I just thought were really good and wanted to use. And then my brother had a person kind of do some really cool inter cool um, drawings and little frippery kind of things that really added a lot to it. So um, we brought it out and... Uh, paperback and hardback. And I've seen now references saying there were 3,000 hardbacks printed and there were 500 signed by Towns, but I just really don't believe that's true. <laughs> I think he may have wanted to press up that many and may have thought I'll do another run, but I don't think there was that many. There was a regular run of, of paper paperbacks too. But he did get Towns to sign, I don't know how many, but I have one that he signed, and my wife has one where he did a little drawing of a horse and then drew an arrow and said horse. <laughs> it was a little line drawing, just very, very kind of funny. But, uh, you know, we brought it out, and the idea really was to advance his career. And also, I thought my brother would make a little money on it because it would have a broader audience than obscure poets, regardless of how good they were. But not many people knew, more people knew who Towns was, not even nowhere near as many as know where he is now. But so that was the idea of it. And, you know, I would have rat holed a whole lot more if I'd have known what it was what it would be selling for today. I mean, and I've never, I've, it's hard to find a hardback listed anywhere. There's paperbacks out there, but I haven't seen many hardbacks up, much less a signed hardback. You know, that should, that's probably worth $1,500, something like that. How did you guys distribute them back then? He had a distribution thing. My brother, he had a little thing built up because he had this press. He was part of the Small Press Association, and they had a few. They had bookstores. It mainly went out in bookstores. Um, if Towns had many to sell, I'm not sure if he got a stash to take out on the road or not. But they went. They went pretty fast, and they were gone and. Um, 1988, my brother died, so uh, that was the end of it. Other than uh, I tracked down, 
let's see, he passed away, and in his will, he gave the press to another goofy, well, he wasn't goofy, my brother wasn't, but a goofy uh, woman poet that he knew who had no real interest in doing anything with it, and then it went from her, she died shortly after, and it went from her to a guy named Bryce Milligan in San Antonio who had a little press. And at some point, I tracked Bryce down and bought what was left. He had a a few left at the time. Uh, He had, I think, sold a bunch to Butch Hancock, who had a... uh, Bookstore. Leave it. Yeah, the same guy. But he had a bookstore called Rainlight Books, I think, in Austin back then. And he had a bunch. But, you know, it's hard to find. And that was why I really don't think there were 3,000 hardcovers, even though it says so in one of the, in the books, has a page where it said, this is number such and such. But at any rate, uh, it was, uh, I don't know if my brother ever made any money or not, but it did sell better than anything he brought out before that. So hopefully he did. I can say that um, my buddy Tim Easton opened for Towns in Columbus, Ohio back when, and he bought one of the books oh. off of Towns that night. Oh, okay. Towns signed it, Take the Money and Run, <laughs> Towns Van Zandt. <laughs> ah. And... Um, so he had at least one on the road to sell. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure my brother would have given him, you know, a fair amount to take out there and and work on. But I don't. You know, it was about. It was less than a year after that that I got booted out of the management by the forces of darkness. I like to call them. <laughs> who essentially I was asking questions, you know, things like, well, where are the contracts and where are the royalty statements? Where are the publishing arrangements and little minor details? And so the guy running the town's label, Tomato Records, by that point, it had been Poppy, and uh, he uh, engineered my ouster, got Towns drunk, and had him sign some papers, and I had, Towns and I had a handshake deal, that was it, so I was gone, bam, out the door, it was 78, and uh, I swore I'd never manage again, and I didn't for five years, (laughs) (laughs) till Steve Earl came along. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to my channel, And if you own one of these songbooks, or if you've seen one in person, or if you've seen Towns Live, why don't you tell me about it down in the comments, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.